Hi everybody, this lesson is on accuracy and precision. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to analyze data and determine if sets are accurate, precise, um, both or neither, and calculate percent error. There is. So accuracy is defined as how close one value is to the true value or the reference value, which would be supplied for you. And then precision is how close multiple values are to each other. So regardless of where they are compared to the true value. This is like the bullseye on the dartboard. So the bullseye on the dartboard would be our true value. Our goal is to get as close to the bullseye as possible. So we're trying to be as accurate as possible. Accuracy for us in the lab is greater than precision. So we, we, if we can make it a one and done lab, that's great. Um, because we don't have time in a high school chemistry class to run a lab multiple times. So accuracy is more important for us than precision. So as you can see here, that is an accurate shot. Those were precise shots because they're very close together. Right, and, but they may not be um, both. Like you might be accurate or precise. You could be both or you could be neither. So let's look at some examples here. So let's look, we've got this data, okay, supplied for you. And we want to determine if it is accurate, precise, neither or both. So you compare the trials to each other and to the average value down here at the bottom. So let's see, are any of our values, are they close to each other at all? I would say no, these are not close. Okay, so these are not very close. I'm gonna put that they're not precise. And it doesn't matter if you put preci precise or accurate first. These are not precise. Sorry, I can't like type on this thing while I write. So you just have to deal with my horrible handwriting with a computer. But then when we look at the accuracy, we are comparing the true value and the average of these values. Okay, reason being is we, kind of have to look at these because we do have one it's pretty accurate um but the average of these values is not at all so well actually let me go ahead and do this um since we have this one that is extremely close like off by the tenth, I would say this is considered accurate because we're looking at one measurement to the accurate. Oh, I'm gonna clear this off. Hold on, I'll clear all this. All right, so let me start this example over. <coughs> so I'm getting distracted by my writing. So for precision. You can compare all the trials to each other. That is precision. And then average to the true value, which is how they do want you to do that. So that would be accuracy. So for precision, which means this one compared to this one, this one compared to this one, this one compared to that one, none of them are close. So I would say not precise, just like we said. Not precise. I'm going to abbreviate that to speed this up. Now accuracy is average to true value. They are nowhere close to each other. So I would say not accurate either. Okay. Neither accurate nor precise. So that's what we've got on there. So now you try this one. This is the you do. So you go ahead and try that example. Pause the video and try that example. All right, so now let's get into percent error and error itself. This is anything that could skew your data. Okay, um, anything that could mess it up, 
make your measurements go off. So one type of error is random error, which is also known as human error. This is something that should not happen, but if it does, it's just coincidental, right? Spilling something, breaking something, not measuring something, forgetting to turn your hot plate on, things like that. And then you also have, well, this one affects your accuracy because it should only mess up one trial because you should see that that happened and then know to fix it for the next time. The other type is systematic error, and this is an equipment error. So this is something like your scale is calibrated incorrectly. You have a malfunctioning hot plate. Your thermometer is not measuring the way that it should. And these will affect your precision because it'll cause all your measurements to be high or all your measurements to be low. Okay, so they're all going to be off the same way. And there's just a cute little meme or gif, whatever. So now we can look at error and determine the percent error of a lab, which is what we want to calculate. So percent error is calculated by error over your accepted value. This is the one that's given to you. This is a reference point times 100. And the error part here that's in absolute value is accepted minus experimental. So accepted, this is your reference point. Experimental is your lab data. So this is what you get. Okay. Get my picture out of here. Let me go to the lab. All right, so now let's go through an example together. I've given you the accepted, the experimental, and I want the percent error. So again, bear with me because I have to do some writing here. So we know that error here, I'm just going to uh, do ER, is going to be equal to accepted minus the experimental. So 27. And some of your references will say experimental minus accepted. And that's why they put the error in um, absolute value to get it to a positive number. If you do accepted minus experimental, it should almost always be in a positive number. So then you don't have to worry about the uh, absolute value bars. So we've got, again, on my calculator, doing this math too, 27.6 minus 14.9, which is 12.7. That's my error. We're going to divide that by the accepted value. And we're going to multiply this answer by 100 to get it to a percent. So 12.7 divided by 27.6 times 100 comes out right at 46%. So there's your answer there. Very easy. You should be able to work through those. I forget I typed all this out, but yes, so there's your answer. So now it's your turn um, to, since this is all typed out, I'm going to get rid of that. So this is your turn to um, try this example. Go ahead and calculate your percent error. Pause the video so you can do that. All right, guys, so by the end of this video now, you should be able to distinguish between accuracy and precision 